Welcome to Spiritual and Ambitious. I'm your host, Whitney McNeil. I'm a certified medium and spiritual teacher, and I help spiritual and ambitious souls just like you live your life purpose through your career and attract abundance by connecting into your intuition and spirit guide. Let's get spiritual and ambitious. Welcome to this episode of the Spiritual and Ambitious Podcast. You are in for a treat today. I'm going to be talking with my host, Leslie Tagorda, all about astrology in your business, astrology and entrepreneurship, and how to really utilize your chart in your business. Now, Leslie is a multiracial brand astrologer, designer, podcast host, author, and creator of the Astro Brand Method. Leslie helps spiritual entrepreneurs and visionary change makers become the luminary leaders they were born to be. I love that. I feel like all the chills with that. As a Hawaii born Filipino Jewish brand astrologer, podcast host, and author, Leslie uncovered her purpose when a crisis in her business identity led her to her natal chart. It was here, her natal self, that her signature astro brand method revealed itself through combining business astrology, branding, and leadership. Today, she teaches astrology in this specific and strategic way to visionary entrepreneurs and change makers globally to help them affirm, embrace, and amplify their star-powered purpose. Welcome to the podcast, Leslie. I'm so happy that you're here. Hi, Whitney. I'm so happy to be here too. My goodness, that bio is a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> you know, it, it is, but I read it before we met. I, I'm like, I have to read it because it really tells your story. And I just have to jump in on this. You were talking about a crisis with your business identity. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you came to be with astrology? I just, it's the first thing that's really jumping out. Like, I have to know the answer here. Yes. I mean, do we have the long, do we have the scenic route or do we want like a short, direct route? <laughs> well, here's a long here's, story. Here's the thing for everybody listening. We have Mercury and Pisces, right? Both of us? <laughs> yes. Both of us. Yes. So <laughs> let's just buckle up because... <laughs> could be a very long episode. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Well, so back in like 2018, I was going through kind of like a midlife crisis. I didn't know it at the time. I knew enough astrology, but I wasn't like so steeped in astrology. And I had gotten married. I had just had my son at a very kind of late age at like 41. And I was like, what is going on? I had a design business for about 15 years, like doing web design and branding design. And I was freaking out. My clients were not really getting the great results that they wanted. Everything was happening so slow. It was like, everything was like pulling teeth. And I was like, there has to be a simpler way. I'm just going to go work at Starbucks, right? Like that's always like the, the out answer, right? We're all going to just go work at Starbucks because we, ha we hate our businesses at that point. But Instead of working at Starbucks, I kind of returned to like my passion, which was astrology. And at this time, you know, I'd been in branding for about 15 years and I've done all of like, you know, do these colors, choose these colors, find your values, brand to this, design your logo, all these like really crazy things. But ultimately we were just guessing. It's like me and my clients were like, oh, well, we like these colors. Oh, we like this font. And I was like, there has to be an easier way. And so when I looked at my natal chart and just like this desperation, like, give me some answers, please. I was like, oh, look, our sun sign, our moon sign, our rising sign, our Mercury sign, all of these planets represented like different parts of our businesses from communications to values, to attraction, to leadership, to our zone of genius. And it kind of like hit me like this big, like, aha, I was like, wait, there is a branding framework right here in our natal chart. No guessing. And so within about three months after just kind of like this aha, it's, I don't know if you've ever felt this kind of like serendipity before, like when you're onto something, everything just like falls into place. Like I found an astrology mentor. I found a business mentor. Everything was getting validated. And it was like literally overnight, like three months, I had a completely entirely new business where I came out of the spiritual closet, starting using astrology 
and developed a method. And so that's the short story. <laughs> I like that because that's such a great moment when everything does fall into place. It does feel like, oh, I'm being flooded with all the answers. I'm being flooded with all the energy. Yes, it feels like this is the right path. And can you just share with everyone how it felt intuitively for you just knowing you're on that right path? Like any feelings or sensations like, yes. Yeah. I had been searching and searching. I feel, and you know, that's like the short, the highlight reel of how it happened, but it was really like 40 years in the making, right? To get to that one place of finally finding that flow. But I remember that feeling of flow as things just being so easy and so intuitive and just my heart was on fire. Everything was like lit up like because I was like, I wanted to find my own thing. I was tired of like copying and comparing and all of these things. And once I'd found this thing, I was like, yes, that's that piece of innovation that I needed. At this time, I did have like a spiritual kind of practice. I was regularly doing like new moon rituals. I hadn't yet discovered like my spiritual guides. I, I knew that they were kind of out there, but I didn't quite have a relationship with them yet. And they just kept on like bombarding me. Once I finally said yes to something, <laughs> they were like, here you go, Leslie. <laughs> here's the here's the red carpet. Mm, I like that. I always tell people that work with me, when you say yes to those opportunities, your spirit guides give you so many more opportunities come in. And it sounds like that is exactly what happened to you. <laughs> exactly what happened. But, you know, it was like 40 years of saying no the entire time. And not that these were like mistakes, but these were all like experiences and tools that I needed to pick up to be the astrologer and be the kind of brand navigator that I am today. Oh, yeah. Nothing's wasted, right? It's so many times people will say, you know, I need to make a pivot in my business or I want to start my business and I don't know what to do. And sometimes people might feel because I think society sometimes kind of teaches us this, that, oh, you're wasting all these years, you're wasting all this time. When really you're gaining the tools, you're gaining the tools to get you where you are right now. And there's more to come. I love this story so much. It's very inspiring. And just seeing that transformation and that progress. And I know that you light up when you talk about astrology. I've worked with you and it's always been, I can just see it. I can see it in your heart <laughs> and your passion that it's, it's definitely lighting you up. So I do want to ask you, I know everyone listening is interested in astrology. But can you share a little bit, which you kind of already did, mm -hmm. how business astrology differs from the traditional or the regular astrology that we utilize in our personal life? Or does it? Once you connect the dots, you're like, oh my goodness, why didn't I use this before? And so what I'm doing when I'm using business astrology, I'm looking at kind of like the business results that we want in our entrepreneurial journey, whether it's like leadership or visibility, our purpose, our values, the way we communicate, the way we lead. And once you start connecting the dots in the traditional archetypes, you see exactly how they work in our work lives, because it's not like our work lives are separate than our personal lives. Like that's also like another misconception that our society says is like, hey, this is work. Don't take things so personally. And that's a bunch of bull. They're integrated because that's just who we are. And so, for example, the zodiac archetypes, when we understand those different zodiac archetypes and we understand which of those archetypes need to come through in our businesses, we can even take like traditional aspects of astrology. For example, if we know that Scorpio is the zodiac and the archetype of like sexual reproduction or our sexual organs and just looking at those body parts. We're like, oh, well, Scorpio is about elimination. And how can we bring, if we have Scorpio archetype in our big three, how can we bring more of that elimination and deep diving into our work? And so it's really just deciding that, hey, I don't have to use astrology just for soul development and finding the perfect relationship, but I can also leverage and use this strategically in my work. Hmm. I have never thought of it like that, the way you just described it with Scorpio. It was just, yes, I get that. 
But I also heard you say the big three, and I know Mm -hmm. my listeners out there are going to say, well, what's the big three? (laughs) So can you tell us what those are? Yes. So our big three are our two luminaries, the sun and the moon, and then our rising sign. So your sun sign is based on the day that you were born, just the day of the month. And then um, your moon sign based on the day, but also the time because the moon can switch signs during the middle of a day. And then the rising sign is the sign that was rising on the eastern horizon from that time and place that you were born. So getting a really specific birth time will help you um, really define that rising sign. And each of those three really make up that kind of the three pillars or the foundation for you personally. But then when we intentionally tap into that in our work, we all have heard that word alignment or attunement. When we really tap into those three archetypal energies in our work lives, it makes things just so much easier and more impactful. Mm. Okay. Let me ask you this. What about with your business? How do you determine the date of your natal chart? I know I heard you say birthday, Mm -hmm. but is there, because I've heard both things. So I want to really get clarity for everyone listening. Would you ever use a date that your business was built or not? So I've heard of different astrologers using the birth date of their business. And my question is this, well, how do you choose the birth date of your business? Exactly. (laughs) Is it the day that you decided and bought that domain name? Is it the day that you earned your first income? Is it the day that you registered your LLC? There's so many different variables. And Yes, each of those are points of initiation that you can glean information from, like as an electional chart, meaning like, okay, money is going to be like this. Visibility is going to be like this. But the way that I was taught astrology, especially as a solopreneur or a founding person of a business, that we always want to align to the natives the person's birthday, because our businesses are extensions of our own souls. And you can't mess that one up because we've all had our first breath. I like that so much. I agree. I feel like you have to really align with your business. And I just can't imagine building a business that's not in alignment with your purpose and your energy and your chart, like you're just talking about. But what happens when someone doesn't know their birth time? What do you do with that? Yes. Ooh, that is such a tricky one. So generally, if people have like a range, like an hour or a few minutes, I can easily kind of just take a look and hear from just the person how they're talking about which energies are coming through. I just actually had this with a client yesterday who had like a half an hour window. And I was like, "Mm, you're definitely born on the later side. But if it's a completely unknown, there are astrologers called rectification astrologers. If you know of a really good one, please send them my way because (laughs) I get this question all the time and I haven't yet found an amazing rectification astrologer that I love and trust. I would love to know. My husband isn't really sure of his birth time. So when we look at the chart, we kind of just intuitively look at the energy and what we feel makes up more of his personality. We're like, we we really think you're born here versus here. So that's so interesting. And I had to ask, because I know that people listening are not going to necessarily know their birth time, but I want to talk more and I'm going to be sharing how Leslie helped me find my ideal dream client and what that means with an astrology archetype when we come back from this really quick break. As a professional psychic medium, I've done tens of thousands of readings, but I felt a call to move more fully into teaching intuition, but I still get so many requests about doing readings. So while I don't do readings anymore, I have brought in some very trusted colleagues who are now available for live one-hour readings on Zoom. If you would like to book your psychic medium reading, go to messengerofspirit.com forward slash appointments to see our available readers and schedule your Zoom reading today. All right. Thanks for hanging in there. We are here with Leslie Tagorda. 
She is talking all about astrology and entrepreneurship, and I'm loving this conversation. I first learned of Leslie when I was understanding astrology in a membership that I was in. And then I started to take some of her courses. And then I said, you know what? I want to work with her one-on-one. And so we had four sessions together and she looked at my chart. And the good news was I was pretty much on track, but I needed to tweak some things. And one of my big questions that I had for her was about my ideal customer avatar, as some people call it in marketing, and what I call it as my ideal dream client when I'm teaching in my spiritual business incubator program. And what was so interesting is she said, oh, your clients, the ideal archetype, the astrology archetype are the Aquarians. So can you tell us a little bit more about how someone might go about finding their ideal dream client through and according to their chart? Yes, yes, yes. I always love to talk about the ideal client at like the fourth step. And the reason why I like to talk about the fourth step is that if we go straight to the client, we bypass what the client is most attracted to. Okay, because the ideal client and um, you exist on a polarity. And so the polarity of you is your rising sign, the how you take initiative, the how you lead, the how you present yourself. And so Whitney, our hostess with the mostest, Leo rising with Mars, North Node and Jupiter all right on her rising sign. So creative, fiery, passionate activist and just going after her stretch potential. And you've already heard her talk about this, your life's purpose. And so she's already, Whitney, you're already leading by your chart. And when we look at our astrology, right, it's not like we're shifting like 180. We're almost always shifting just a couple of degrees to make it much more specific. And so for your Aquarian archetype, the opposite of your rising sign, so each of the archetypes, each of the zodiacs have different polarities, different opposition pairs that work like yin and yang. They are so attracted to each other, but the Aquarian archetype can't find or can't be attracted to Whitney until she is like fully radiating her Leo self. And so we don't want to bypass going straight to our ideal customer without first stepping into that Leo rising. So I have a question for you, Whitney. When you learned about that Leo rising and all of that passion and fiery energy, I think you did make some immediate changes to how you presented yourself. Is that correct? I did. What was so interesting is I kind of felt like some of these changes were naturally unfolding. So, you know, my son is in Aries, but it's in the eighth house. So I always resonated with that fire, but it was a little bit subdued being in this house of water, but it made so much sense with mediumship and the unknown and transformation and bringing light to those areas. But Leo took me a while to step into that rising sign. And what's really interesting is my mom has commented over the years, wow, you're wearing really bright colors. Wow, you're like, you know, wearing your hair like out. You you always keep it up, which I've got it up right now. (laughs) But it's more of like, oh, yeah, I've made this change. But when you talk to me about it, it gave me more insight and almost like a permission It's almost like my soul needed some sort of permission to fully stand out and to not feel bad about it. I think a lot of us who want to live our purpose, when I say us, I'm meaning spiritual entrepreneurs, sometimes we'll be afraid to step into the spotlight. And apparently I still had some of those reservations somewhere. And I even looked at some of my programs too, to want to match some of the colors of Leo in there as well. Yes. And so what I find, so a couple of things about that potential of the rising sign is like that resistance at first, right? It is a stretch potential for all of us. It's one of those things that when we first find out that that's the way we're meant to lead by and how we need to present ourselves, we're like, hold on. (laughs) Is that really the case? And then as we practice, we're like, oh yes, this is kind of like our most natural state. I noticed that you had changed a lot of your visual brand. 
and started, you know, like just showing up more fiery. And this really allowed your Aquarian change makers to find you even better because they are attracted to you because you're stepping into that rising sign. When we step into our own full power from our leadership and our role in our rising sign, then we can attract our ideal customer. Our ideal customer, the people that we are meant to commit to, they could be your dream customers, they could be business partners, they could be romantic partners. They are going to embody the archetype on the other side of your rising sign. Now, this doesn't mean that they're going to all be that sign, but you're going to find a lot of them. And what I mean is by this embodying of the archetype for Whitney with her Aquarian um, soul customers, her dream clients, they are change makers. They might have felt that they were like they're they're different or weird or they're black sheeps, but they are always looking for belonging. They're looking to innovate. Whitney, you also have the South Node there. They're looking to let go of these past patterns where they feel like really stuck in. Um, you also have Mercury in the seventh house and Pisces. They're really looking to be able to perceive and understand and communicate with spirit. Like, I think those are your exact words. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and what's interesting is I will do polls in my community groups and I'm seeing a lot of Pisces lately, but that's yeah. really the the message of what I do <laughs> to help you really connect into spirit. So it's so interesting. Yeah. And the Aquarian part, because you do have Aquarius and Pisces in your um, your ideal customer role model, is that that Aquarian part is they want permission to do things differently, mm-hmm. right? They want permission to be able to say like, yeah, I work with my intuition in my business. Absolutely. Which is definitely outside of the normal status quo. But you know what, Whitney, you and I, we're changing that. <laughs> I really do think we are. I love that intuition, spirit guide communication has become more mainstream than it was 10 years ago. And I do think that as more people step into their purpose and are becoming more authentic and expressing who they are and able to do things differently, that the lights are turned on. It's kind of like this chain reaction. So I love seeing this change. Yeah. And even if, you know, like we're working in like very traditional fields, like say like accounting or, a, or even as a lawyer, some of like the most intuitive people and the best lawyers I've ever met, bet you they are working with their spirit guides and harnessing their intuition and in their work. Oh, absolutely. You know, I've got to ask you this because I know that some listeners will reach out to me and ask me, and I don't want to be the one to explain it because you are the expert. But we had mentioned earlier that we both have Mercury in Pisces. Could you just share what that means for people or what that is? Yes. So Mercury is our communications kind of avatar. The process of Mercury is to express, express our needs, to perceive and understand information. So we can think of it as this communications device. And so that that's what we're talking about, Mercury. But Mercury on its own is really just the messenger to our soul's consciousness, which is represented by the sun. And so the sun and Mercury will never be more than one sign apart. They're very, very, very close. Now, Mercury has its home in both Gemini and Virgo, where it's really, really, really strong, and it's detriment or fall in Pisces. And so people might be familiar with these kinds of classifications like exaltations or detriments. And you know what? I hate that kind of stuff. Right. Because if somebody told Whitney and I when we were little kids that we sucked at communications and maybe somebody did like, hello, like humanitarian freshman college said, is English your your native language? She actually asked me that. And I was like, what? Wow. (laughs) Racist and so many different things. But I digress. So with Mercury in Pisces, Mercury in Pisces doesn't communicate logically. It doesn't communicate step by step. Its communications are through spirit, through art, through music, through vibes, through dreams. 
And so now we don't have to think about as like Mercury and Pisces being just like this weak link when we understand that the gift of Mercury and Pisces is channeling, channeling messages that come from other places through us. And so Mercury and Pisces is super potent and you'll see Mercury and Pisces in a lot of like really great musicians who sound almost like transcendental, like just like music is coming from other places or people that are communicating from spirit. What I've learned, and this is kind of a recent tool and skill that I've picked up is that especially when I'm doing Astro Brand sessions, I'm able to channel through my spirit guides, the language that is right for my clients. Mm, I love that. I love to understand ourselves more and utilize our positions and our planets as our superpowers and understanding how to, to do that. So if you're out there, we'd love to know if you have Mercury and Pisces or what ahas you've had so far, I'd love for you to reach out to us on Instagram and we'll list Leslie's contact in the show notes and also my Instagram in the show notes as well. Thank you, Leslie, but I have more questions. Like I just do. (laughs) Yes. What's a common misconception about astrology that might keep some entrepreneurs or change makers from exploring it? Ooh, yes. Such a good question. I'm really adamant about not fear mongering and not judging using astrology. I've seen clients create these narratives about their chart because some astrologer had told them that they have like bad aspects or hard and difficult things in their chart that then they stop seeing the gifts that actually happen in their chart. Or people start fearing planets like Pluto or Saturn because things are going to be so challenging. And I really want to reframe all of those narratives because I don't see things in our chart as inherently bad or good. We can decide to use challenging, quote unquote, challenging aspects because they have tons of potential and energy in them. Whereas easy aspects, if they're unrecognized, they go wasted and unused. And just like the power of Pluto to transform and intensify, and Saturn can turn doubt into mastery, it's just about reframing and having a new language around these archetypal energies. And so that's just kind of from like the natal aspect. And so natal aspect, I mean, like the energy that you were born with. And then on the other hand, there's also the astrology and kind of the climate of the here and now called transits or collective astrology, just where the planets are here and now and the kind of influence they have on us little humans living here Mm -hmm. on earth, right? So most of us have heard about Mercury retrogrades and you know, most of us have been fear mongered out of murky retrogrades going, oh my gosh, the sky is going to fall and everything is going to mess up. Don't start new things on murky retrogrades and all of these other things. And yes, some of those things are true. But when you are prepared for a murky retrograde, when you understand the energy that is coming to play, then you can really work intentionally with that Mercury retrograde for some amazing results. And so it's more about understanding the energy. Like Whitney and I are just talking a little bit about a monsoon that is approaching. And so you're not going to be wearing your suede shoes out into the monsoon. But if you know that monsoon is coming and you're ready to play with that energy, you know, you're going to have your galoshes on, you're going to put some containers out to collect some rainwater, and you're going to do the work that really takes, um, makes the best use out of that monsoon. Mm, I like that example. That's really helpful. I also love how you can utilize these energies in a positive way. You know, Saturn is in my second house. And so I've always been kind of taught in a way to fear that and somehow, and I like how you look at Saturn as mastery, which is so beautiful and it makes so much sense. Yes. Saturn has a really bad rap, especially I think one of those transits that we know about is like the Saturn return. When Saturn returns to its place in your birth chart around the age of 28, 
And it's that kind of maturation when we're leaving our youth and going into our adulthood. And this is really where we get to master our own being and learn who we are. And imagine if we never had that Saturn return, if we never really learned who we are, and we continue just going about kind of the follies of our youth, where would we be? And, you know, for you, Whitney, Saturn's so important because it's conjunct your moon. And so this gives you a lot of boundaries and containers in your intuition and your emotions that you're really able to make whole and kind of crystallize how you connect to your emotions and your intuition. And it's of extreme value for you being in that second house. Mm, Thank you. I, I love this. Well, I have a question for you. How does, since you're on the Spiritual and Ambitious podcast and we talk about entrepreneurship, how does being spiritual and ambitious show up for you in your business and lead you into a more aligned path with your spiritual entrepreneurship? (laughs) That's such a good question because I was in like the spiritual closet for so long. (laughs) (laughs) So... I think once I finally decided to not give enough (laughs) about what other people thought that I could just really come out and talk about new moon rituals, talk about astrology and how I harness astrology in my work, people got really, really curious. And I've been doing this, you know, astrology and new moon rituals for over seven years. And I love seeing how this has gotten wildly popular and how so many people are really, you know, using tarot cards in their consultations and like planning their businesses according to astrology. It just feels so wonderful to be one of those trailblazers giving permission to others to use their spiritual tools as, you know, strategic tools in their work. Mm, Yes, absolutely. I really feel that the more we utilize these spiritual abilities, that more business opportunities to open up and it really opens up doors and just the more that you're yourself, which I just heard you say, and the more you started to really share and shine, the more people became curious. And as you stepped into your power and most likely your rising sign, right? (laughs) People come in. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. And the other thing I think is like, it makes things so much more, more easy, right? There's still really great places for analysis and strategies and learning all the different tools for technology, like having these very pragmatic tool sets. It's really important to know those, but we can go on and picking up all of these different strategies that may not work with us or work for us. But when we start to really harness our spiritual tools, whether we're connecting with spirit guides who are showing us easier ways or co-creating with us, I'm trusting that the spirit guides will put the strategies that I need in front of me and making my path a lot less difficult. Mm, That's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. This has been an amazing conversation. And I know that everyone listening wants to learn how they can work with you. So how do I know how, but how do you work with clients? (laughs) Yes. So I work with clients in a number of ways. Um, I offer astrology and entrepreneurship trainings. Um, I have a bunch of trainings from um, learning how to read your natal chart to positioning your business for work. And then also how to use Chiron, the wounded healer in formulating your offerings And then I also work with clients one-on-one, just like how I did with Whitney, where we go through in four sessions, your entire chart to really position your business, figuring out the right messaging, talking about your ideal customer, and really pinpointing your zone of genius and the archetypes that need to come out in your own business. And I also have a, a couple of books that I've written, one called Star Powered Brand, which if you're kind of a do-it-yourselfer and have a, a little bit of a good grasp of reading your natal chart, Star Powered Brand shows you kind of that framework on how to align to your own natal chart in your work. And then, of course, um, new and full moon rituals for entrepreneurs, 
how to work with intentionally with the power of the moon in your work. Oh, I will link to all of those in the show notes. And you've got a free gift for people listening. And could you tell everyone more about that? Yes, yes, yes. The free gift that I have for you is called My Leadership Mantra. And so basically, I take your big three, your sun sign, your moon sign, and your rising sign, and you create this little mantra that you can attach meaning to and so that you can post this wherever you need to to really step into your luminary leadership power. Because if you are a business owner, you are a leader. And that leadership mantra will really show you that kind of guiding principle on how you are meant to lead in this world. Mm, I love that. So if you're listening, you know how powerful affirmations are and mantras are. And you can find this free gift at newmooncreative.co forward slash spiritual. We'll link to it in the show notes too, but I highly recommend that you take advantage of this gift. And I hope that you're able to receive it. It's just, I've seen these mantras and they're really, really powerful and impactful. So Leslie, is there any last advice that's coming through that you'd like to share with our listeners? Yes. Gosh, there's so much, but I will leave you with this. Be curious. Always be curious about just kind of your higher powers and ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask for assistance from spirit because they are always there waiting to assist. Ah, that's wonderful advice. Thank you so much, Leslie, for sharing your energy, your wisdom, and your time with us today on this podcast. Oh my goodness, Whitney. Thank you so much for the invitation. I just love chatting with you. All right. That was such an amazing conversation with Leslie. I will put all of her links in our show notes, and I can't wait for you to receive your free gift. So, you know, that's all for now, but I will be back next week with a brand new episode. And until then, here's to staying spiritual and ambitious. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. And if you loved it, would you please share it with a friend? I would also love your review and a reminder to subscribe so you never miss an episode. You can find me at messengerspirit.com and you can take the four intuitive languages quiz and find show notes there too. If you want to connect on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, you can find me at messenger of spirit. If you want to continue the conversation, join my free Facebook group at messengerofspirit.com forward slash group. I'll meet you right here next week. Here's to stand spiritual and ambitious. This podcast is part of the Sound Advice FM network. Sound Advice FM, women's voices amplified.